Coming up on the St. Paul Forum, I'm speaking with Beverly Oliver Hawkins and Brenda Bailey about the Model Cities program. That's coming up next on the St. Paul Forum. Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Catherine Day, and joining me today are Beverly Oliver Hawkins, CEO of the Model Cities program, and Brenda Bailey, who is in their real estate development area. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Thank for coming. You. Really Thank glad you. you could be here tonight. So, Model Cities has been around for quite a long time. I have heard of it over many years. What's Give me an overview of what Model Cities is so that our audience can understand what you do. Well, Model Cities has been seen as a human service organization. We are a group that actually define community development in a broad sense because the way we see it, community development includes human services, which for us is crisis intervention, housing services, working with uh, children's mental health issues. But it also includes real estate development, it includes economic development, commercial development, it includes working in community. So uh, that's basically what Model wow. Cities is. It's a community-based developer. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about some of the kinds of work that's happening today, um, for example, one of my heroes is Jeffrey Canada and the work he did in Harlem, the Harlem Children's Zone, that's modeled on the idea that, that it's a net. It's a net of things that, that you need to, you just don't look at one issue to understand the problem. Is that part of the similar philosophy exactly, that Model Cities exactly. was formed with? We don't see that the, the issues that are presented to us, and actually that's always been the case, that came from our history as well, but the issues that are presented to us, we don't see as a silo. We see it as being interconnected with so many other mm -hmm. things. So when families present a problem to us, a lot of that oftentimes is not just tied into the family. It's also tied into the economic uh, status of that family. Mm -hmm. Maybe the problem that they're dealing with is lack of employment or lack of employable skills. Mm -hmm. So that takes us from being a human service provider to actually looking at economic development and the critical link between those two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so give us a location. So when you're talking about model cities, since you're in the real estate side, um, where are you physically located? Where, does your, where do you do your work? Our offices are on University, at, on the corner of Victoria and University, actually, in the Frogtown area. Frogtown. But our service area is much broader. We like to say, our service area is the world, but unfortunately, some of the funds consolidate us to uh, a specific area. Okay. And our development projects are usually in the Ward 1 area. Ward 1, which Ward is one. Um, Melvin Carter's exactly. district. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Carter, mm -hmm. yes. And so uh, you're right in the middle of light rail construction mm -hmm. then, too. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? We are. At ground zero yes, for that. Yes, we are. Um, is that affecting some of your clients? Uh, the, the, is that another factor? I mean, I'm, in the long run, I'm sure it'll be a positive, but in the short run, is it is it creating some, some turmoil for your area? Well, I should say that uh, our brownstone building that's located at Victoria and University is oh. a transit stop, and we yeah. all wanted that to mm -hmm. be included as a transit stop, but our part of that building includes retail space. So, of course, the parking is the situation yeah. and being able to access those businesses. Uh, so, uh, we know that the businesses are being affected by mm -hmm. this. So, what we have tried to do on our end as a property owner and a landlord is to make sure that the parking is available for customers. So, customers can still come in and good, park good. and get in the building. But that certainly is one of the things that mm -hmm. has affected all the businesses along the Central Corridor mm -hmm. uh, on University Avenue. And that is uh, with the construction, everybody's expecting a lot and we are among that group. I'm a proponent of the oh, LRT, yeah. I'll say Absolutely. that. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important and it moves us from where we have been to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Where was the original funding from for Model Cities? Well, is it federally funded exclusively? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, we actually came from we were a Model Cities project, and as such, the Model Cities demonstration program back in the 60s was not intended to be a continued project. It was a demonstration. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we weren't even supposed to be here. We shouldn't be talking to you now. Mm -hmm. We went beyond that demonstration, that five-year demonstration. From that money, we got money from the City of St. Paul, which was Community Development Block Grant funding. Mm -hmm. And when that funding phased out, we received money from HUD. Back then, it was called Health Education and Welfare for our clinic. But the more we began to expand and to get into more things such as um, 
childhood, uh, early childhood development, when we branched out into that, then our funding sources be also began to expand. And we began building buildings, mm -hmm. basically because our patients and our clients, we needed the space to serve the people we were intending mm -hmm. to serve. So mm -hmm. we began building buildings for mm -hmm. that. We have a couple of clinics that we've built. Uh, we built a family development center. We got into supportive housing, so we began uh, building buildings for that. And it actually wasn't until we got involved with the Brownstone building that we built a building that was generating rental income from people who were not mm -hmm. our clients. Right. So, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a sustainable yes. aspect to yes. it. Yes. So when you talk about the clinics and the locations of those, where, um, what are some of the centers of activity uh, from the real estate perspective? The clinics are also in the Ward 1. Um, District 8, mm -hmm. and they're up in uh, uh, the north side of University is District 7. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what um, is a, you know, most important right now for Model Cities and what you, how you want the public to understand what you do. Well, we could talk probably a little bit about the, the upcoming projects we have, Central Exchange. Well, it's called Model Let's Cities Redevelopment. Do. We are looking at uh, constructing two mixed-use buildings on University oh. Avenue. We're very interested in what's going on on University and have been for a number of years. Yes. But with the LRT construction, we see this as a wonderful opportunity for our community-based developers to really get involved and to do some real substantial stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we are intending to redevelop the Brownstone building and also to create a new building called Central Exchange. Both of those buildings will be what's called mixed-use buildings, mm -hmm. which has commercial on the, on the street, and mm -hmm. then on top of that will be residential. residential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About 44 units of um, affordable housing, then? Affordable housing, mm -hmm. residential. It's just exciting. It's We've seen some exciting. preliminary drawings, and we just think they're going to mm -hmm. fit very well with the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, who's uh, what uh, kind of architects are you employing for this? Are they part of the mm -hmm. Model Cities program? The draw you say the drawings mm -hmm. that you're getting? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We've uh, we're contracting with a, a independent contractor. Mm -hmm. um, Trust and right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to saying TWP now. Uh -huh. TWP. <laughs> TWP. But they, yes, and he's um, on our development team. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so where are these two physically going to be located on the avenue? Mm -hmm. Brownstone, of course, is on the corner of Victoria and University. And the Central Exchange is about one block, block and a half east of our office location. And, um, when you say Central Exchange, does that mean you have an idea of who you actually want to be in that <laughs> building? Or are you in the process of still thinking about what kinds of services and, and Central Exchange is, uh, we, we see that as a demonstration, again, and a oh. model and a pilot for what can be done in terms of infield development. Most development, I shouldn't say most, a lot of development concentrates at intersections, and that, that makes a lot of sense. Brownstone is at an intersection, mm -hmm. and it has a lot to do with uh, accessibility to customers and so on, so certain retailers prefer being on the corner, mm -hmm. but we only have four corners on a block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything else is infill, mm -hmm. and so there needs to be some way of figuring out how do you develop uh, the middle of the, the block as well in a way that's attractive, that meets uh, community needs, that also brings about some green space as well, mm. and that's another thing that we're very interested in doing, Love it. Mm -hmm. is to add along the cement, and it could be cement from for, for miles along the central corridor. Oh my gosh, yeah. But we want to add in some green space as well. Not only do we Great. want green space that's uh, pleasing to the eye, but that also makes sense. So we're looking at urban gardening and urban farming as a way to bring out this whole, what can be done in the middle of the block. Mm -hmm. So we intend to incorporate that in the Central Exchange Building. And uh, actually, uh, at the Brownstone, we also want to include some a pocket park there would not only be a space that could be accessible and nice and pleasing, but also would have some vegetation in there as mm -hmm. well. So we're mm -hmm. hoping to be able to partner with some other groups to mm. help us along with that. Well, that's mm -hmm. fantastic. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm very involved with the other end of the light rail at um, the Creative Enterprise Zone area down at 280 and University. Oh, yes. And it's so interesting. I'm such an advocate for the pocket parks as well. It's so interesting, though, how many people think that they actually will promote loitering and crime. And and do you have some information about what you think pop, pocket parks can do for a neighborhood? 
Well, I, th I think it, it, it's an added feature for one thing. Uh, it brings beautification. It, it makes you feel home. Mm -hmm. um, I, and when you, when you mention um, possibility of crime, it's so, <laughs> people are oriented to the television. And yeah. that's where they see when they see trees and they see people lurking behind them. They think that. Yeah. But pocket parks, parks can be designed with low vegetation mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And it can be pleasing and inviting. And yeah. that's what we want our yep. development to be pleasing and inviting. Well, and I, I know that the evidence actually is the opposite. If mm -hmm. you look at, um, like the Brooklyn, um, I'm not going to get the name right, but it's, I want to say Greenway, but that's not what it's oh, called there. Yeah, I know what you But mean. that whole yes. area that they've developed, yeah. and if yeah. you ever get a chance to look at some of the beautiful pictures, yes. it's the, it's just the opposite. The, oh, yes. the parks and those green spaces mm -hmm. can actually promote be very connection. Therapeutic. It's mm -hmm. therapeutic, yes. it's calming. Yes. It, it it creates relationships yes. Yes. and so uh, yes. and it creates a sense of ownership yes. mm -hmm. um, so actually I think it can be so I'm, I'm thrilled that yeah. you're incorporating it and I think yes. that's very important what kind of partners are you looking for in that because I think there's some great partners doing some similar kind of work well we're there. so glad to hear that because we actually are, are we have our feelers out in different places mm -hmm. uh, including even the federal government we're interested in working with government, with the private sector, nonprofits. We actually are meeting with a community group um, on Friday to begin talking about how we can develop programs mm -hmm. that incorporate, say, working with youth or working with seniors where mm -hmm. they actually can be involved in the management mm -hmm. of the vegetation mm -hmm. in those parks. But the idea of creating uh, an edible community yes. you know <laughs> yeah is is a great it's it really is. a great yeah. objective it really yes. is in the yes. heart of the city mm -hmm. yeah That's it's right. being done in other cities it certainly mm -hmm. can be done here absolutely mm -hmm. I think Detroit is another model yes. for Milwaukee for Milwaukee mm -hmm. has it yeah so you've got the idea of the pocket parks mm -hmm. what about what kind of tenants when you say central exchange it feels to me like there's a vision behind that idea mm -hmm. so can you What's the vision? Mm -hmm. Well, the housing will be workforce housing, mm -hmm. which could um, refer to younger singles or older, not retirees, mm -hmm. so to speak, but someone who is um, free from the rugrats. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> rugrats. <laughs> <laughs> but for the but the, the units are one bedrooms. Okay. And there are some two bedrooms, but there aren't three and four bedrooms like for families. So really small. Mm -hmm. Smaller yeah. units, units, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we refer to it as workforce mm -hmm. housing. Um, anyone who's 60%, 50% mer mm -hmm. uh, what is it, area medium income, income. will mm -hmm. be eligible. Will be eligible for the homes. And so the average rents might range from what to what do you think? If do I remember correctly, I'm, we, preliminary numbers are like from 675 to 925 mm -hmm. something like very that. Nice. Affordable rates. Very affordable. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then on the lower level in terms of commercial, because it's the infield development, probably what works best for that would be office, uh, that kind of a space, although we are also looking for a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, we would like to love to have a coffee shop in there and uh, to have it somehow tie in to this whole organic thing oh. that we're trying to create for the Central Exchange mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Brownstone, we'll have uh, the, the tenants that are currently in the building, the commercial tenants are interested, <coughs> excuse me, in staying in the building. Mm -hmm. So, but there will be ample space. We're expecting to have additional space space available for others who may want to be right there mm -hmm. on the central corridor on the LRT at a transit stop mm -hmm. and that we know that'll be some very marketable space. Oh definitely. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we mentioned that Catherine but we're also looking at rooftop garden. Oh no. Oh, yeah. Love to hear that. And that. Great. So we were matter of fact we had a meeting this morning with our architect to try to hone in on some specific designs. You know when we're thinking terrace designs for the units mm -hmm. and then you can walk out into the a garden area. Mm -hmm. So the tenants would actually be doing the rooftop gardening? Hopefully, otherwise, when, and that's what our meeting mm -hmm. on Friday is mm -hmm. to see if the tenants are not interested then we want to fall back. Do you think it'll be tied into any sort of um, uh, farmers market kind of sale, you know, well, you know, as I look at what's going on in Milwaukee, I think, well, why not here? 
Mm -hmm. You know, and I know only enough to be dangerous about uh -huh. it. <laughs> We're in the same position. But they have gotten very involved in urban farming and urban gardening mm -hmm. to the extent where they actually are growing vegetation and growing crops that they are selling to restaurants mm -hmm. and so and to and to farmers markets. So it's possible to have in the inner city, in the heart of the inner city urban core, to have this kind of a farming kind of a relationship. And the thing that, that I like about it is that it's so therapeutic. Mm -hmm. you, people are then right back at nature. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a chance to get your hands in the soil. Mm -hmm. The space that we have available with Central Exchange and Brownstone won't be large enough to accommodate mm -hmm. anything like what's happening in Milwaukee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, maybe it can be a catalyst mm -hmm. that people, you know, like it's going on up at 280, mm -hmm. Highway 280 in the pro mm -hmm. project you're talking about. Is coming down eastward to where we are, and it hopefully will continue to go eastward mm -hmm. into uh, the. Um, there's other projects that are being talked oh, yeah. about too a lot at Dale and University, yeah. and also at Western and University. Mm -hmm. The old home site is being uh, yes. redeveloped by That's Aurora exciting. St. Anthony. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, NDC is looking at redeveloping the northeast, northwest corner of Dale and University, and hopefully we can incorporate all along the corridor this green. Mm -hmm. So there, mm -hmm. there are possibilities mm -hmm. and our hope is that you know once we are further into this that we'll have a chance to actually go and visit and see what these other groups are doing mm -hmm. and given that we may be talking instead of talking a lot of space we may be talking about 2,000 square feet of space what actually can be done there mm -hmm. and what can you put on the roof mm -hmm. and how do you manage that and how do you incorporate community in that as well mm -hmm. so as you it's an important anniversary year for yes for the program mm -hmm. uh, 45 years yes. um, how are you celebrating it and um, what's the vision for the future well we started the year off with a um, a worship service in January we uh, had our service at Camper Memorial United Methodist Church and we have a connection with Camphor and have had over the years. The pastor at Camphor actually worked at Model Cities, Gloria Roach Thomas. Uh -huh. And then we are planning on the 21st of July having a Back to the 60s dance. Okay. And uh, Model Cities is known for having a lot of enjoyable social events when we have our anniversaries. So hopefully uh, people will be interested in coming to this. We're selling tickets for $45 mm -hmm. since it's our 45th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And it'll be at the Crown Plaza Hotel in downtown oh, St. Paul. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'll be a lot of fun. We encourage people to dress in the 60s attire mm -hmm. and dance contests and um, some oldie but goodie music and some just a lot of fun yeah. that we expect to have there. And then we'll end the year with a another a social event that we'll also have at the Crown Plaza that it won't be the, the big uh, celebratory thing, but hopefully will be a reunion of people who have been involved with Model Cities over the course of these 45 years. And mm -hmm. that's a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. If you're just joining us, I'm talking with Brenda Oliver Hawkins and Brenda Bailey about the Model Cities program. So, uh, so it'll be celebratory. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about the strategic direction. I mean, if, when you get to 45 years, and I know you're talking about some of that with these new things you're doing. Mm -hmm. But uh, when people think about this organization, what is it about you that makes it relevant to today from your perspective? What's at the core of the relevance for Model Cities? Well, I think that we are intent and determined to be fully involved in community. We are. We came up out of community. We were birthed in the basement of St. James AME Church. That's how we came about. And our whole reason for being then and, and still now is to increase the access that residents in, not just in Summit University and uh, Frogtown, although that is our primary service area, but essentially throughout, as Brenda said, in the world. Because mm -hmm. we have also worked with people in other countries, in Uganda, we've been in India, we've worked in um, Sierra Leone, so we've done mm -hmm. various things outside of the country. But to try to increase their quality of life, and we do that by um, human services, we do that by uh, jobs, creating job opportunities, we do that through construction projects like our real estate development mm -hmm. projects. So we do expect to continue in that area. We're very 
interested and involved in what goes on on University Avenue. Mm -hmm. And we have been for a very long time. We've been actually a, a property owner on University since 1992, actually. Mm -hmm. And we bought the, the building that we're in now, we've been there since 1998. So we're very interested in making sure that what goes on University Avenue is a strong economic base, a strong vitality. We want that whole strip from Victoria to Western to be full of life. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are um, uh, people in the community who would like to see the cultural diversity of the community, and I'm one of those, to be fully enriched, you mm -hmm. know, to really bring that out. There's mm -hmm. a lot of diversity oh, in yeah. the Brocktown uh, oh, yeah. Rondo neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and so we need to be showing that and, and spreading that around. So we will be involved in that. We'll continue in uh, real estate development projects, and we could talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the old home site. That's one of the ones that we'll be working on. Oh, you'll be involved with that too. Yeah. We well, we've been building. invited to do the um, townhomes piece to develop the townhomes oh, through our MCASA Homes program. Okay. Um, and so we're, it's, it's in this birthing stage right now. Mm -hmm. No idea what they're going to look like, but at least we know the area, which would be on the Aurora side of the whole block. So it's going to face uh, west. It'll, I mean, that's on the Aurora is south, south, south of University, yeah, correct. It's on the southwest mm -hmm. side of the street, essentially. Mm -hmm. Old home is on the southeast East corner Aurora. but um but i'm just thinking they're going to face the the, the, the roar, yeah they'll be facing mm -hmm. aurora is aurora. what you're saying uh -huh. which is an extension of our current mcasa homes program yes. and i don't know about the mcasa homes what how would you describe those to us it is a single family home development that is focused toward families who ordinarily could not buy a home for credit issues debt issues whatever mm -hmm. so we uh institute a well, we didn't really institute it, but we do provide a pre-purchase counseling program. Um, it's, I don't know if you're familiar with HECAT. The Minnesota Home Ownership Center mm -hmm. provides funding through the HECAT grant, which is subsidized through Minnesota Housing, and we are recipient of that grant. Okay. That allows us to provide these counseling services to these families so that they can um, correct their credit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and reduce their debt, and make them viable for a mortgage. Okay. And our single, they're single family homes, and we have constructed six and rehabbed ten thus far in the last wow. three, four years. Fabulous. Yes, it's a beautiful program because mm -hmm. we just make a family just so happy when mm -hmm. they feel mm -hmm. like they're yeah. they have an investment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. investment for their family, mm -hmm. their children, and an investment in the community mm -hmm. that they're living in. Mm -hmm. We should say that the old home developer is Aurora St. Anthony. We are not the developer of okay. the site. It's of Aurora St. Anthony okay. Neighborhood Development Corporation. Okay. And Aurora St. Anthony is working with the Sands Company, mm -hmm. Sand Company, that also is doing the residential side on the north side, the okay. north side of the mm -hmm. street, which is facing University Avenue. Okay. The the townhomes that we're looking at putting in, the Mcasa townhomes, the site that that is available for us is probably going to accommodate somewhere between uh, eight, eight to, to ten, ten mm -hmm. townhomes, mm -hmm. and we also again yeah. want to put in a pocket park. So there was a lot of excitement about that. Well, you know, the opportunity that exists with this is um, in five years we we have the. Um, benefit of being part of the development that's going to create this whole new place in five years it's going to look so it's different and be, we're going to be so accessible i have said to people i like the lrt i like the idea of it because mm -hmm. not only is our market within a one mile radius of where we are mm -hmm. Our market now includes Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. It includes Chicago. Mm -hmm. People can literally get on, when this is all done, mm -hmm. they can get on a train in Milwaukee and they can go shopping mm -hmm. at the Mall of America. Mm -hmm. And so why not stop at Victoria on your way to the mall? <laughs> <laughs> so can, and buy something and from the people from the, in the Brownstone, in the Brownstone building. building. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I laugh about that, but Truthfully, in years to come, that's mm -hmm. what I think people should be doing. University Avenue businesses should market to our community.
but they should never forget that their market is a broader group now. It, mm -hmm. it includes people who don't even live in, in the St. Paul area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, are you getting a sense of how oh, people yeah. are feeling? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's been intentional to involve and engage community. Mm -hmm. Most funders, many funders, LISC is one of the funders mm -hmm. that is intentionally Local gone out to try support to, corporations. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Twin Cities LISC program, and I, and I believe it's not just the Twin Cities program, but certainly the Twin Cities list has intentionally tried to engage community and there have been uh, contracts with other groups to very much involve community in decision making and planning mm -hmm. in deciding what the community really needs and what should go on along University Avenue. You're at 45 years and you started the conversation by saying it was just supposed to be you know a model for a short time that even the name Model Cities, yes. I mean, it feels like you could update the name, but if yes. you were to say, you know, is it going to be another 45 years? And if so, what do you imagine will have changed for the organization in another 45? Well, I think it will. We are intending to stabilize the organization. We expect that by being a property owner and that by uh, continuing to meet community needs, there will be a, a need for what we are doing. Mm -hmm. We don't see ourselves as being stagnant. Mm -hmm. We do strategic planning and we assess what the environment is, what the needs are, and we try to work our services to match those needs given funds available. So we are always out there trying to see where it is that we can be helpful. And I don't see where that would go away. We do intend to be a property owner. Um, it's important that the community own itself. Yeah. And so that's what we are about and I, we firmly believe that if we can get people in the community to, to build and own and have businesses in the community, hire in the community, that stabilizes the community. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. intend to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And 45 years from now, I may not be around to see it, but hopefully uh, whoever is there, it's, Model Cities has been there for 90 years mm -hmm. doing this. Doing this work. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you want to do is make sure they come to the event in July. July so 21st. July 21st is the Back to the 60s party. Correct. Yes. Sounds like a lot of fun. It will yes. be. And the Crown yes. Plaza is a great yes. place it to is. hang yes. out, especially on a summer night because yes. you can go out on and look at the river yes. and yeah. hang out there. So um, we'll put up your website so they can go to your website and purchase tickets. Yes. They're reasonably priced, yes. $45. Yes. Is, I assume some of that's a contribution. And, yes. Um, so, and that includes food. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So the, it'll be a fun Lots night. Lots of dancing. Lots of dancing. <laughs> good music. Yeah, good, good music. music. Mm -hmm. A live band. Fun. Yeah, fun. Mm -hmm. It'll be fun. And then they'll look for, they can also check in for the event in the, is it going to be in the fall? The other one you talked about? Yes, it's, it's actually November 30th. November 30th. Yeah. Okay, so almost at the end of the year. Yes. So yes. there'll be two chances to party. Yes. 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 The Model yes. Cities. Yes. And then if there's sort of a, a last thought, um, you know, what is it you would like to, uh, a call to action, if you would, what, what do you want the community to do to be part of Model Cities besides come and party with you? Well, you know, we are always uh, open and in need of support from community. And that includes not only just financial support, which we do have donors who support what we do, but also volunteers. Oh, you we need do work Good. with uh, some very critical issues. Mm -hmm. We one of the human service programs that we have is um, we are one of the county's contractors for the juvenile detention alternatives initiatives oh, program, mm -hmm. which is working with young young guys and young girls who had they were they not in our program they would be in juvenile detention. And so so you're, saving, a, you're saving some tax dollars and, yes. and saving some lives. Yes, indeed. Tell us your website. So we'll put it up, but tell us how, how to get www.modelcities.org. Okay. And uh, all of our services are on there, and the events that are coming up are on Good. there as well. Good. Well, I'm just delighted that you could join us. That's all we have time for on the St. Paul Forum. Come join us again next week. <laughs> <laughs>